give them a human. Good evening, tell of viewers of STV. On our top stories, 24 officials in custom and trade logistic chain begin receiving training on how to determine time limits for goods to leave the port. The training program that lasts four days is unfolding as three new external trade procedures are being launched to ease import-export transactions. Sports football inspectors of the African Football Federation, CAF, begin visiting construction sites to host the 2016 Female Africa Cup of Nations tournament in Cameroon. Why they evaluate construction sites and newsroom ponders over the readiness of Cameroon. This and more in a moment. You're watching the 8 p.m. newscast on Spectrum Television. We begin with the Cameroon Customs, which is bracing up to adopt a unique instrument to determine the time frame for goods to leave the Douala port. 24 officials from the Customs and those of the trade and logistic chain are presently acquainting themselves with this tool in a four-day program that opened today here in Douala. Peter Sosie tells us more. The necessary time taken for goods to be released from the port is becoming a measuring rod for the efficiency of trade procedures. Before now, many structures in Cameroon carried out studies on these with different results. The World Customs Organization has therefore designed a tool for its member countries, including Cameroon, to use in calculating the period taken for goods to leave the port. Since Cameroon has ratified the the, the Bali Accords on Trade Facilitation, one of the indicators is this time release. And we intend to be able to have one structure to measure what time it takes to leave for goods to leave the ports of uh, the dweller. Cameroon's custom administration has made significant strides in modernizing the sector, especially in securing transit operations, extension of the automated system of customs data, and dematerialization. Adopting this tool is necessary if the custom sector hopes to scale up performance. We will no longer have many results from the same study. Now we'll have one unit that will have to take care of uh, everything, come up with uh, one result. So the results of this committee will be the results of the time that it takes to release goods uh, from uh, the port of uh, Douala. 24 officials drawn from the customs and its partners in the trade and logistic chain have begun a four-day program in Douala to be schooled on the operationalization of this tool. With the help of a team from the World Customs Organization, they will identify constraints, evaluate new techniques, and establish a base for the facilitation and performance of trade exchanges. An operational team shall be created at the end of the training program. Mission to check the time frame for the clearance of goods at the Douala port. Importation and clearing of goods could be done online at the port. Experts who assembled here in Douala this day say about 72 other stages have been overcome for a secure and credible virtual import and export system in Cameroon. Meantime, three new procedures of external trade has already been launched. Details with Darling Fuju. The loading certificate plus the unique form of external trade operations and the extension of electronic payment are three new procedures of external trade in the country. The dematerialization of these procedures after those of the Land Management Bureau have officially been launched this Tuesday, July 26 in Douala. Uh, launching the dematerialization of three procedures, those are very main, the main, main procedures in uh, the, the, the import export uh, of our of our goods this is important to reduce the, the time of process in the importation of exportation of our goods and this is a, a matter of competitiveness of effectiveness of our economy launching the three procedures this day a clear demonstration of each has been made by experts easy many will see but much is to be put in place to make sure they are accessible to all businessmen involved in external trade. We shall organize sensitization and training sessions with different actors involved and also with users and importers 
what we use in this unique form. These are instruments through which Cameroon intends to extend its external trade and be more competitive. Kula and the Southwest region in general have been reassured that the emerging regional center in Limbe will soon be functional. The statement was made by the Minister of Public Health, Andre Mamafuda, as he visited the Limbe Regional Hospital. Ebune Rilindis reports from Limbe. In this working visit that brings the Minister of Public Health to the Southwest region at the Limbe Regional Hospital to inspect the facilities in place at the hospital and to know what is lacking, considering the fact that Limbe will play host to the 2016 female AFCON. Despite the size and facilities of the regional hospital, there is a problem of electricity, which the minister has reassured the public that this problem will be redressed before September ending. I would like to reassure uh, the habitants of Linde, in particular in uh, our habitants in general in the southwest region, that the uh, emerging regional center According to the minister, there will be two medicalized ambulances, one for Limbe and the other for Yaoundé, as they are the two main towns hosting the 2016 AFCON. Meanwhile, the two theatres at the regional hospital will be modernized and completely renovated. Therefore, to the minister, before the ending of September, the emerging regional centre will be launched. Some English and French health journalists in Cameroon are presently undergoing training on how to use reports, articles, and various publications to stop stigma and discrimination on people living with HIV and AIDS. The training organized by ACMS comes at a time when most patients die not due to AIDS, but shame and rejection by the society. Ebune Rilindis tells us more. Statistics have proven that in the year 2012, 81% of people in Cameroon tested HIV positive have been excluded from family activities, 78% from social activities, 72% from religious activities, while 47% have lost their jobs. Most often, these patients die not due to the infection, but out of rejection, shame and discrimination. It is at this backdrop that this workshop has been organized to improve the knowledge and competencies of journalists and to give them the necessary support which will enable them initiate effective actions to help the people living with HIV and who are affected by stigmatization and discriminated upon. Up to 80% of the cases that people are still stigmatizing are people living with HIV AIDS. Uh, we hope that the journalists will bring out the message that whether they are HIV positive or not, they are still our brothers and sisters. The 2011 study showed that it was 4.3%, uh, and as the Minister of Health said, when you extrapolate that up to 2015, there's a reduction uh, to 3.9%. For those living with HIV, we should treat them with some dignity and give it, them a chance in society. Among the many journalists in Cameroon attending this workshop, their expectation is to get more information and to know how journalists can stigmatize a person living with HIV in his or her report without knowing. Therefore, at the end of this workshop, journalists are expected to use their duty and the power to eliminate stigma through articles, reports and other publications. Munola Futsu, Cameroon's Minister of Youth and Civic Education, today officially launched a special holiday program to encourage civic education among youths. The campaign dubbed Vacances Citoyen will be funded by part of the 102 billion CFA presidential grant to accompany youth during the 2016 Youth Day. Ivonako. 
fighting against uncivic behaviors like juvenile delinquency and immorality in a country comprising of a considerable number of youthful population is a major challenge to the government. It is for this reason that some 150 community mediators have been trained to promote civic education among their peers. So now what we are doing is to, to deploy those uh, community mediators within in the quarters, villages, and to sensitize all the population and the youth in particular during this uh, uh, holiday activities. This period of uh, holiday activities is a vulnerable period for the youth. The community mediators have been instructed to target areas mostly occupied by youth, such as administrative and university milieus, markets and highways. The expected outcome is to change uh, the behavior of the people and the young people in particular and fight against uh, uncivil behaviors. Going by this youth, the proximity peer education approach will enable them to denounce uncivil acts in neighborhoods as well as encourage those values that will build a morally upright society. It is the wish of the government to train more community mediators to serve in the 377 councils within the country and create over 20,000 job opportunities for the youth. We stay in Yaoundé where the Minister of Mines, Industry and Technological Development granted a press conference today to inform international and national public opinion of the second edition of the Master of Quality Forum to be organized in the month of October. NS Mgwabubu says the forum will pave the way for adoption of a quality policy system that will make Cameroonian goods competitive in the world market. Yvonne Ako tells us more. The Master of Quality Forum that will stretch from the 12th to the 14th of October 2016 aims at encouraging stakeholders to create a synergy of action that will facilitate the adoption of a quality policy system of production of goods and services. The Master de la Qualité constitue un moment privilégié. The, promotion the Master of Quality is a special occasion to promote and make known government's initiatives for quality development. This event will enable stakeholders to reflect on the best way to master the new dynamics of trade imposed by trade globalization and liberalization. The forum is coming at a time when the economic partnership agreement with the European Union is entering into force. By developing a quality infrastructure, Cameroon will easily promote its products in the world market and also ensure the availability of healthy products for home consumption. Going by the Minister of Mines, Industry and Technological Development, Ernest Wabubu, this can be achieved by setting up a multi-party committee whose main aim shall be to develop and promote the country's quality infrastructure, establishing technical centers dedicated to each sector of activity and proficient laboratory teams to support industries and companies. We now talk youths and holidays in this newscast. Holiday is a period for children to engage in numerous activities to entertain and keep themselves very busy. To that effect, our reporter Darling Fejo visited an entertainment center here in Douala where children entertain themselves. She reports. A new school with diverse activities. The holiday period is an occasion for most children, regardless their age, to learn new activities and get acquainted to one another. Uh, with, all my f with all my family, my sister, my brother, and my grandmother, I uh, come into place. Yeah, everybody. Here, yeah, for instance, children are introduced to a whole lot of activities, amongst which classic dance, cleaning, reading, amongst others. I read books, especially literature books or history of Cameroon. I equally love to play tennis and swim chair. 
Children with disabilities are not left out of this fun moment. We allow the underprivileged children to play with other children, since playing is one of the rights of children. While some are busy selling various items on the street to assist their parents as the school year approaches, some occupy themselves in entertainment centers. This period is indeed a time for children to discover new things and face certain challenges of life. In news out of Cameroon, U.S. Democrats opened their national convention in Philadelphia Monday amid renewed tension between backers of nominee in waiting Hillary Clinton and former rival Benny Sanders. Supporters of the insurgent candidacy are angry about leaked emails from Democratic Party officials that seem to show they preferred Clinton over Sanders in the primaries. Let's join VOA with more. Bernie Sanders walked out to a thunderous extended ovation as he took center stage on the opening night of the Democratic Convention. Sanders thanked his supporters for starting a political movement. I hope you take enormous pride in the historical accomplishments we have achieved. With many of his supporters angry about leaked emails from Democratic Party leaders that seemed to show a bias in favor of Hillary Clinton, Sanders sought to heal the party rift. He urged his loyalists to support nominee-in-waiting Hillary Clinton. I serve with her in the United States Senate and know her as a fierce advocate for the rights of children, for women, and for the disabled. Hillary Clinton will make an outstanding president, and I am proud to stand with her tonight. Anger among Sanders supporters was also visible outside the Wells Fargo Center, where hundreds of demonstrators were confronted by police, resulting in several arrests. Sanders supporter Lisa Lavalli Evans remains upset about the email revelations. The media is in on it. Everybody was in on it. They said we were crazy all along. Well, look who's crazy now. But Sanders delegate Richard Cassidy from Vermont said Democrats will come together eventually because of Republican Donald Trump. I think it'll be a very small group of Sanders supporters who don't vote for Hillary Clinton because the alternative is just unpalatable. Who knows? If Trump wins, it might be the last election. You can't let that happen. Among the opening night speakers was First Lady Michelle Obama, who also urged Democrats to support Clinton. Don't let anyone ever tell you that this country isn't great. That somehow we need to make it great again. Because this right now is the greatest country on earth. Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren also revved up the crowd with a forceful attack on Republican Donald Trump. When we turn on each other, rich guys like Trump can push through more tax breaks for themselves. And then we'll never have enough money to support our schools or rebuild our highways or invest in our kids' future. Despite the focus on the Democratic convention, Trump and running mate Mike Pence rallied their supporters in Virginia on the heels of last week's Republican convention. We're leading. We're actually leading in the polls. Clinton and vice presidential running mate Tim Kaine will both address the Democratic convention later in the week. Jim Malone, VOA News, at the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia. In sports football, Cameroon's readiness to host the 2016 African Women's Championship is under scrutiny as a visiting CAF delegation is presently evaluating the country's level of preparedness. In the upcoming report, Peter Saucier presents the stakes of the CAF inspection in Cameroon. The stakes are high. Tengal Yodega of Tanzania is leading a six-man CAF delegation to Cameroon, not for a safari trip, but to examine the country's readiness to host the African Women's Championship built for November. Since earning the rights to host the tournament, the country is witnessing remarkable transformation in the sporting infrastructure. One which sports minister Bidung Pat did not fail to enumerate to the CAF team in Yaoundé, Monday. Construction and rehabilitation works are going on efficiently. An ultramodern stadium constructed in Yaoundé, southwest region, was homologated last January. 
by the African Football Confederation. On the other hand, the rehabilitation works of the Yaoundé on the sports stadium selected to host matches of the Women African Cameroon 2016 are carefully going on with the will to comply with the list of requirements. The CAF delegation is in the country at a time when Cameroonians are yet to feel the effervescence of hosting a major tournament since 1972. Critics even lament that not much is being done by the local organizing committee to bring the football crazy population closer to the tournament. With barely four months to the showpiece, the local organizing committee is still to come up with the mascot and him of the tournament. The situation in construction sites is another cause for worry. After the collapse of a tunnel under construction at the Amadou Aijo Stadium on the 12th of May that killed one person, newspapers reported the tragic death of two workers at the Limbe Oni Sports Stadium on the 18th of July and an accident involving a truck carrying construction materials for Afghan projects in Limbe this weekend. If the inspection team will be ice poised on sports infrastructure and hotel facilities for November's football fiesta, they must also adjust their viewing lenses to telecommunications, media coverage and production signals, as well as the state of the Yaoundé Dwala Limbe corridor linking the main theatres of the event. Talking about the African tournament, inspectors of the African Football Federation, CAF, have effectively begun evaluating construction projects ahead of the 10th female African hosted in Cameroon this 2016 come November. Checks began with the Amadou Aijo Stadium and the Military Stadium in Yaoundé. Tomorrow, Wednesday, the delegation shall visit hotels to host visitors and players in the nation's capital. Larinette Apaje tells us more. The first construction site visited this 26th of July 2016 by inspectors of the African Football Confederation, CAF, is the Amadou Aijo Stadium in Yaoundé. The stadium's former capacity of 37,000 seats have been reinforced to 40,610, including mobile seats, an amelioration which has gained Cameroon a positive remark from the visiting CAF delegation. Four full security areas have been stationed at the north, south, east and west wings of the stadium to guarantee the security of spectators. Officials of Cameroon Sports Department have presented to the CAF delegation a parking space with the capacity to contain 1,800 vehicles, Type 1 and 2 VIP seats, comfort measures, nine buildings which are under construction to host the health service, business centers, a conference room amongst others. Inspectors from the African Football Confederation have also been accompanied within the stadium to evaluate safety measures that have been previewed for players, such as a safe passage and the hygiene and sanitation conditions of the stadium. Even though yet to be done, Cameroon stakeholders in charge of the AFCON Games have assured CAF officials of the construction of two giant screens for public viewing during an ongoing match. CAF officials have also been assured that power shortage, which manifested itself during a digital presentation of the stadium project, will be resolved and telecommunication boosted. The two annexed stadia of the Amado Aijo Stadium have also been visited, with the military stadium in Yaoundé being the last stop for CAF officials with regards to 2016 AFCON project in Yaoundé. Construction projects in Boya and Limbe will also be evaluated before the visit of CAF inspectors come to an end on the 1st of August 2016. Edition. Keep watching as up next, the STV Sports team gives you La Presse. Refait le match. Have a good night.